Okay, you know, on this, I, start, I was talking about this table of standard reduction potentials. You can use these and use the numbers to calculate, to make numerical predictions of what's going to happen. We're just not going to do that. There's one of the many things we're going to skip. But you might run into that someday. So we're going to use this half reaction method uh, because you can use it in an acid environment or a base environment. It's not as easy as the other one, but you won't know the difference if this is what you know how to do. So I'm, I'm going to skip to hydrogen ions instead of hydronium. You can use hydronium. This is a little simpler. Okay, here's example problem five. What you need to do is write these down as I go through it. Try to figure out what it is. Then watch that minute and a half or whatever it is. Then try to do the next step and then watch me do it. Try to do the next step, watch me do it. And after you've done three or four of these, Hopefully you got a little bit of the hang of it. Watching me do it and write it down is not going to work. <coughs> so in example problem five, you're going to put potassium permanganate, that purple stuff, with tin 2 chloride in an acid environment. And it'll react and it'll make manganese chloride, manganese 2 chloride, and tin 4 chloride and water and KCl. And you've got to balance this. You can't just balance this one by inspection like you can a regular equation. Even if you can once in a while, there's going to be some you can't do. You can't even guess your way there. So let's go through the steps. So you want the unbalanced net ionic equation for the reaction emitting spectator ions. So potassium is going to be a spectator ion. Most of the time, you know, if you got something all the way over to the left, the periodic table on the active metals, it's going to be a spectator ion. If you got something all the way to the right in the halogens, usually it's going to be a spectator ion. Chloride ion, chloride ion, chloride ion, chloride ion, chloride ion. That's going to be my spectator ion this time. None of those change oxidation numbers. Chlorine sometimes does change oxidation number, but it's the spectator ion this time. So, I can also take, if I take my chloride ions out, I have an H plus and an H2O. This is stuff we can add when we know we have an acid environment. So I can leave that out right now and focus only on what's changing. So I've got a manganate ion, and a tin ion, the manganese 2 positive ion and a 10 4 positive ion. That's our unbalanced net ionic equation for the reaction with our spectator ions emitted. Granted, with that, this, re, this half reaction method, this is a little hard to come up with. That's one of the harder things that makes it a harder step. Okay, let's go to the next step. We're going to have to figure out which one of these is oxidized and which one of these reduced and throw the electrons in there. So write separate incomplete equations for the oxidation and reduction half reactions including oxidation numbers. Okay. So we write this as 10, 2 positive going to 10, 4 positive. This is oxidized, this is reduced. I could write my electrons in there and I didn't do it. So this is going to cough out two electrons. This is going to, the manganese is going to be reduced because oxygen is minus two, minus two, minus two. You know, I don't understand. Well, catch up. Minus one. This has to all be according to, I think it's rule number seven in the oxidation number rules. Add to minus one. 
there's four oxygens, they're minus two apiece. This is not hard. One manganese. What's it gotta be? Minus two, minus two, minus two, minus two to give you minus one. It has to be plus seven. I, I should be able to work two or three of those. If you don't have it after two or three, odds are pretty good you're not gonna have to have it after two or three dozen. Because you either can't, or more likely, you're just, oh, I'll get it on the next one. I'll get it on the next one. I'll get it, no. Jump on top of it, be aggressive. The osmosis method doesn't work very good for learning. Okay, so this is going to gain five electrons. Now I could have written my electrons in this step and I didn't do it in this step for whatever reason. Okay, so balance the atoms in the half reactions. Okay, and you, then you balance the charges by adding electrons. So I have one tin, one tin, two electrons. I have one manganese, one manganese. Here's where that came in as I'm in an acid environment. Back this up here. I'm in an acid environment, so I can add hydrogen ions where I need them. I can add water where I need them. So I got one manganese, one manganese, counting atoms here. Four oxygen, I need oxygen over here, and the only way you can get it in there is to put water in. And when I put four hydrogen in here, I get eight hydrogen atoms, so I can add eight hydrogen ions. Now, we wanna balance the charges. So I have two positive and four positive, I must have two electrons to balance. Four plus negative two is two positive. Here I have eight positives and a negative is seven positive. Two positive, I have to have five electrons. So I have five negatives and one negative is six negative. Eight positive is two positive on this side. That side's two positive. So I add an electron to balance. What's next? Get the electrons the same. What's that? Least common multiple? Two, five, so I need to double this. Five times this. The whole thing. When you do that, you have five, five, and ten. Double this. Ten, sixteen, two, two, eight. So step four is to adjust the coefficients so the electrons will cancel. So we're at five times this, double this. Now add the reactions. And we're gonna have the electrons cancel. Okay, electrons cancel. So I have five and 16 and two, and five and two and eight. I'm just taking the electrons out. This is what's left. Now, we're also reducing like terms, but we don't have any like terms to reduce. In other words, sometimes you have hydrogen ions on this side, and hydrogen ions on this side, and some of those cancel or hydroxide ions on this side and hydroxide ions on this side and some of those cancel. Or water on both sides and some of those cancel. We don't have this this time, so all we're gonna do is return any spectator ions and restore state descriptors. In other words, put in aqueous and liquid and gas where it goes. So way back at the beginning, we took the spectator ions out which were potassium ions and chloride ions. Okay, now we're gonna put them back in. So we're gonna put these chloride ions with the tin, these chloride ions with the hydrogen, this potassium ion with the permanganate, and we're gonna have chloride ions
ions added here, chloride ions added here, or water and KCl. And you might have to balance more to get to that point. For example, on this one we do. Look, I've got two permanganate ions. When I put my spectator ions back there, I have two potassium ions. Where do they go? Well, they have to go over here with some extra chloride ions. So that your chloride ions, when they add up, are the same as the other side. So when you go to restore your state descriptors, where it's your aqueous and gas and liquid, and you put your spectator ions back in there, lean on what you know from what you started with. Because that KCL, that's where your extra potassium ions are gonna go. And you're gonna, when you get down to the end, You're not really done. You have the ability to uh, balance it from there if you need to. You may be done, but you may not be done. Again, you can add hydroxide and water to balance it in the base environment, hydrogen ions and water to balance it in the acidic environment. Okay, this example is not in the book. Let me see how we're doing on time here. Okay, we've got time to do this. This reaction is a key reason why I ended up at Corey Rawson, actually. My son would say, fun fact. This extra example is not in the book, but it occurs in an acid environment. And I was teaching redox the last year I was at Audeville. And that had been the first time I'd got to redox in years. So all the stars aligned and everything fell right. And the students wanted to go at a fairly good pace. It was a good group of students. We got to redox for the first time in years. And after doing redox, <coughs> finishing up at the end of the year, I'm in there on a weekend washing glassware. And when I wash glassware, I always put everything in an acid bath to eat off the lime deposits and stuff. And then I rinse it. And then I soap it and wash it. And then I rinse it and dry it. Well, having finished up redox, I put a test tube or something in my acid bath, hydrochloric acid bath, that had potassium permanganate in it without thinking about it. And it did this reaction. And it shot chlorine gas out, which is nasty. And I got a face full of that, got it in my eyes, nose, lungs, and that made me sick. I was sick for days. And so at the end of the year meeting, you know, I'm just existing going through those last couple of days. And at the last meeting, at the last day for the teacher work day, sitting there kind of debriefing with the principal, said something that normally I'd have let it slide, but it was just like, I didn't have any patience for it. And that was like, I'm out of here. <laughs> I was just kind of a watershed moment. One, two, one day where I got sick because of this reaction, and I just was done dealing with the same set. Give me a different set of problems to deal with. Been dealing with these for decades. So, because of that reaction, if it hadn't happened, I probably wouldn't be here. So you write that unbalanced net ionic equation for the reaction emitting spectator ion. So we can take out the potassium ions, we can take out the chloride ions here, here. Now, this, though, that chlorine, this chlorine molecule has an oxidation number of zero, so some of those chloride ions are there, and some of them will take out. They'll end up back there. So the heart of the reaction is some chloride ions are gonna get converted into chlorine gas, which is nasty. And some permanganate ions are gonna be involved in producing manganese two ions. 
Okay, now we have to separate these out and decide what's oxidized and what's reduced. So you should, you know, rather than write down what I have, try to do it yourself. Figure out what's losing electrons, what's gaining electrons. So you've got chlorine, and you're going to want to write the oxidation numbers down to help you figure it out. Cl2, zero oxidation number. Cl minus is minus one oxidation number. So this is going to spit out electrons. For manganate ion, the manganese part of that has a plus seven oxidation number. Manganese ion is two positive. Again, you might be, well, how do you know that's plus seven? Because they have to add to the charge and the charge is minus one. And there's four oxygen. And one of the rules says oxygen is minus two apiece. Minus two, minus two, minus two, minus two. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And a manganese. What's this have to be? Minus two, minus two, minus two, minus two to give you minus one for that charge. You should be able to do that. It's not hard. Whether or not something's hard shouldn't be much of a criteria on whether or not you decide to do it. Okay, so now we have to balance the half reactions. Again, you should try to do this before you just write down what I have. Balance the charges by adding the electrons as reactions and products. But first, let's balance the atoms. Okay. So I had Cl2, so I have to have two chloride ions. That means I'm kicking out two electrons. Okay, had MnO4. And again, we can add water and we can add hydrogen ions. I'm okay with the one Mn, one Mn, but I have four oxygen, and the only way I can get oxygen over here is to add four waters, which gives me eight hydrogen, I can add eight hydrogen ions. And eight positives minus one, seven positives. I have to have five electrons to make that come out to be two positives. So five and six negatives and eight positives is two positives. So I have two positive on this side total, two positive on this side total. Now what's the next step? Multiply this by five, multiply this by two. This looks a lot like the last one we had. Once I do that, my 10 electrons cancel and I can add everything up. And once I do that, I just basically eliminated the electrons. 16H plus, 10Cl minus, 2MnO4, 2Mn, 5Cl2s, and 8H2Os. Okay, we're not done, I don't think, because we have to at least put our spectator ions back in. And once you do that, this changes a little bit. I've still got my Cl2 and my H2O and my Mn on this, on their product side. But when I have these two manganese, I have to have two permanganate ions, I have to have two potassium ions that go with it. So I have to have some extra potassium over here with chloride ions. Remember, if you have a little trouble with that, go back here. In case the L was a product, a starting reaction will help you out. That'll help you figure out how many to have. Okay? And I think we have the, that, that is the answer, but you can go balance from here if you need to. And we have the descriptors in there, state descriptors. So that's that one.